many figures who have made their mark on world history can appear mundane and lackluster in everyday life. But not Lady Pamela Hicks. She led a vibrant, eventful life. As the youngest daughter of Earl Mountbatten, a cousin of the Duke of Edinburgh, a bridesmaid and lady-in-waiting to the Queen, and the wife of a renowned interior designer, her biography boasts an impressive array of fascinating chapters. Her jewels rival the beauty of royal diamonds, and their quantity stirs envy among many modern European royals. Today's story is dedicated to her diamond necklace. The necklace features two rows of diamond pathways, connected by horizontal pendants. The creator of this piece, along with the exact date of its origin, remains unknown. It is most likely that the necklace was acquired in the late 1940s to early 1950s, possibly when her father served as Governor-General of India. One of Lady Pamela's earliest appearances in the diamond necklace was at the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II in 1953. Later, the great-granddaughter of Queen Victoria wore the piece at a celebratory evening marking the ascension of the new monarch. Initially, Lady Pamela joined Princess Elizabeth as a lady-in-waiting for a Commonwealth tour in 1952, which was abruptly cut short due to Elizabeth's sudden accession to the throne. However, the following year, Lady Pamela was again appointed as a lady-in-waiting for the Queen's post-coronation Commonwealth tour. This tour lasted six months and spanned 44,000 miles. Lady Pamela accompanied the Queen and the Duke on numerous official occasions, often donning the diamond necklace along with pearls and a diamond tiara at countless formal events, including the state openings of Parliament in New Zealand, Australia, and Ceylon. Lady Pamela continued to wear the diamond necklace after returning from the Commonwealth tour, appearing at notable events throughout the 1950s and 1960s. In later years, she was not seen wearing the diamond necklace. Although it may have been discreetly sold, it is also possible that the necklace was among the jewels forgotten in a bank vault, as her daughter India Hicks recounted. Let's explore another remarkable piece from Lady Pamela's collection, her diamond bow brooch. This exquisite antique brooch comes from the collection of Lady Pamela's mother, Edwina, first Countess Mountbatten, and likely belonged to her grandmother, Amalia Castle, the sole child of international magnate Sir Ernest Castle, whose fortune the Countess inherited. The brooch is one of the few family heirlooms inherited by the Countess that remained unaltered, and it was notably worn at Lady Pamela and David Hicks' wedding in 1960. Lady Pamela inherited the diamond bow brooch along with the Mountbatten tiara and her mother's Art Deco diamond necklace the month after Edwina's sudden death during her honeymoon. She was seen wearing the bow brooch several times during the 1960s and 1970s, especially at a concert in 1962. The diamond bow brooch made a reappearance at another wedding when Lady Pamela wore it for her daughter India Hicks' marriage to her longtime partner, David Flintwood, at the Church of Brightwell Baldwin in Oxfordshire, continuing her mother's tradition. After this, the brooch disappeared from public view. Another fascinating piece that belonged to Lady Hicks but was sold is the Mountbatten Diamond Floral Necklace. This necklace, dating from the 1880s, was designed as a garland of ivy leaves adorned with cushion and rose-cut diamonds, featuring screw fittings that allowed it to be worn as a tiara. It likely belonged to Amalia Mary Maud Castle, the daughter of financier Sir Ernest Castle, and mother of Edwina, Countess Mountbatten. Edwina wore the diamond floral necklace when the family joined Princess Margaret for the royal premiere of Captain Horatio Hornblower at the Warner Theatre in Leicester Square, London, in 1951. She also appeared to wear the necklace along with her pearl and diamond tiara at a banquet for the King and Queen of Sweden at the Royal Naval College in Greenwich in 1955. Countess Mountbatten lent the diamond floral necklace to her younger daughter, Lady Pamela, who wore it to a dance during Princess Elizabeth's stay in Malta in 1951. Around the same time, she posed for a portrait wearing the necklace and the same gown. After Countess Mountbatten's death in 1960, the diamond floral necklace was inherited by her elder daughter, then Lady Brabourn, who apparently wore it with the Mountbatten star tiara. In 2020, the diamond floral necklace was among the jewels auctioned in the family collection of the late Countess Mountbatten of Burma at Sotheby's, where it sold for £44,100, far exceeding the estimated price of £4,000 to £6,000. The current owner remains unknown. Let's take a look at another necklace, and you may have guessed which one. Indeed, it's the Mountbatten Art Deco diamond necklace. 
This stunning platinum chain set with diamonds in the Art Deco style is believed to be a redesign crafted by Lady Mountbatten in the 1930s, based on an earlier piece from her late mother. The long chain can be divided into a shorter necklace and two bracelets. Lady Mountbatten wore the Art Deco diamond necklace with the Mountbatten tiara and an emerald necklace for a striking series of portraits taken by Yevon during the coronation of King George VI and Queen Elizabeth in 1937, using various configurations, both as a necklace and as bracelets. Lady Mountbatten frequently wore the diamond Art Deco bracelets for portraits, pairing them with the pearl and diamond tiara for photos taken by Cecil Beaton in 1937, or with the emerald necklace for portraits captured by Beaton during World War II. Most notably, she donned the Art Deco diamond necklace for a series of official portraits commemorating her husband's appointment as the last Viceroy of India, after which he was honored with the title Earl Mountbatten of Burma, as well as the Mountbatten tiara and the necklace during his tenure as Viceroy. After returning to the UK in 1950, Lady Mountbatten continued to wear the Art Deco diamond necklace at numerous social events. She passed away shortly after her younger daughter's wedding in 1960, and the necklace was inherited by Lady Pamela. Although no longer a lady-in-waiting to the Queen, Lady Pamela, and her influential interior designer husband, David Hicks, led a very active social life during the 1960s and 1970s. She wore the Art Deco diamond necklace and bracelets with the Mountbatten tiara at various events and in a series of vibrant portraits. Next, the Mountbatten tiara, an Art Deco diamond necklace made an appearance at a dinner at Britwell House, the home of Lady Pamela and David Hicks, before a ball at Luton Hoo in the 1960s. Unfortunately, in 1978, Lady Pamela auctioned off the Art Deco diamond necklace, which sold for $71,000. Its current whereabouts are unknown. But we must also talk about the Mountbatten tiara, crafted by Chowmet around 1910, adorned with diamond scroll motifs topped with diamond trefoils. It is believed to have been acquired in the 1930s by then Lady Louis Mountbatten, a wealthy heiress. Lady Louis wore the tiara at the coronation of her husband's cousin and later, in a series of official portraits marking her husband's appointment as the last Viceroy of India, after which he was made Earl Mountbatten of Burma. The tiara was frequently worn in India, alternated with her pearl and diamond tiara, as one could not be seen twice in the same one. Lady Mountbatten wore her tiara at the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II in 1953 and continued to wear it at formal events throughout the 1950s. Lady Mountbatten passed away shortly after her younger daughter's wedding in 1960 and the tiara was inherited by Lady Pamela. Although she was no longer a lady-in-waiting to the Queen, Lady Pamela, and her influential interior designer husband, David Hicks, led an active social life during the 1960s and 1970s. She wore the Mountbatten tiara at numerous events and in many portraits. In 2002, she put it up for auction at Sotheby's. Lady Pamela remarked, We are not pop stars, so we need the money. I am sad to sell it as it belonged to my mother and is very dear to me. However, the time has come when I had to sell something. The tiara sold for £149,650, significantly above the estimate of £100,000 to £150,000, and was purchased by a private collector. It has not been publicly displayed since, 